For those who are currently studying in the UK for a master's or a BSc degree program, it's important to actually evaluate if the value, the money you spent for this master's program is it worth it compared to the knowledge you acquire for the program. Now for me personally, the amount I spent for an MBA program in the UK is far, far more than the value I got. I can say with so much confidence that I actually didn't learn a lot during my MBA program. Not because I wasn't focused, and for those that checked my last video, you see that I just actually graduated with a distinction for my MBA program. However, the knowledge I got from my university was practically 10% of the value of the assessment and the assignment I gave back to the university to be able to earn that distinction. So if you're currently in the UK and you're studying in the UK, please share with us your experience in the comment section if the value of the money you paid for that program is equivalent to the knowledge you acquired for that particular program, please state in the comment section. So please click on the like button so this video can get to as many people. And if you're coming across this channel for the first time, please click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing Korean family. I'll be sharing with you guys every single penny I spent doing my master's program in the United Kingdom. And I was having like um, a thought and um, an evaluation of how much I spent for this program and the kind of knowledge I was able to get at the end of the program was actually worth it. I actually had a conversation with a particular um, individual on this channel a couple of days ago and the um, the main purpose of that conversation was because she actually paid a tuition fees about £26,000 and I was like why would you go for a £26,000 master's program in the UK and she shared with me the fact that she wanted um, that particular university because she thought she was going to get huge engagement. She wasn't coming to work in the UK to pay tuition fee. She actually had enough funds to be able to sort out that tuition fee. However, she wanted a program that would be so engaging that, you know, she's going to learn a lot and be able to bring um, those skills to the labor market. Only for her to get to university and it was more of self-learning, which is the way um, UK program is structured. It's really more about self-learning and you just go to class to have conversation, you know, listen to other people's opinion about a particular subject. That's where the UK program is des designed. So she was a bit disappointed, you know, um, starting the program after six months and she discovered that she wasn't really learning. She wasn't being engaged in conversation. And she said something funny that uh, even for a two-hour class, you probably have like 15 minutes teaching and the lecturer just you know, allow them to talk among themselves and share ideas. And that wasn't what she was expecting. She was expecting a lot of learning, you know, a lot of um, yeah, more engagement with the lecturers. And that's why it's important. If you're a country international student in the UK, you can share with us your thoughts about the kind of value you're getting from your university compared to how much you spent. I actually spent quite a lot of money for my master's program. I a tuition fee alone was £15,000. £15,500, actually. That was after the... Um, uh, international student discount and for me basically I wanted to learn uh, because of the fact that my undergraduate was in biochemistry and I, I was moving into business and I was looking for an opportunity to actually learn a lot about business administration. I've been running businesses before I even came to the UK so I was looking for a way to learn on how you can actually structure a business and the truth is I never learned any of those things while I was studying. Not that I didn't want to learn, but there was no avenue. I wasn't taught any of those things. Some of the things I learned, so some of the values I got from my program were self-learned. I actually went on my own, make my own research, and I was able to provide you know um, solutions to some of the assessments um, I was being given in my courses. So to be honest with you guys, studying in the UK is really not you know, as people expect, the kind of value you get is not as much as you would, you know, expect. So for me, I spent £15,500 for the tuition fee for a two-year master's program. And aside from tuition fee, there are other expenses that come with, you know, studying in the UK, which I tell people, if you're coming to the UK, ensure you um, make adequate plans so you don't get stuck here in the UK. I've got information of people, you know, getting stuck while studying in the United Kingdom. And one thing people don't really understand is the fact that, you know, you moving to the UK doesn't mean you've got money. Most people who are in the UK today came in through debt. Some of them had to borrow money from different organizations to be able to fund their studies here. And it's so, you know, disheartening when people back home think, you know, Three months after he moved to the UK, they think, oh, this guy has made it and doesn't want to help. You know, I had a conversation with someone 
couple of um, you know um, months ago, and it was you know was angry because he said um, he needed five thousand pounds to be able to fund his movement to the UK, and he will be glad if I can borrow him five thousand pounds. And I'm like five thousand pounds. How do you expect me to raise five thousand pounds to borrow an individual? Where from where? I'm a student who is only restricted to work for 20 hours. I've got lots of bills to pay here in the UK. How do you expect me to borrow an individual £5,000? And this individual got pissed off, you know, uh, broke conversations. I, so that's why the conversation was even there before the whole conversion of borrowing of money came into play and all of that. So people really need to understand that it costs a lot to live in this country. And aside from your tuition fee, you start talking things about accommodation for me for those of you that have been following my channel for a while i was a bit lucky with the aspect of accommodation uh, my first one year in the uk i lived in a free accommodation i was enjoying electricity for free i was enjoying um uh, you know gas for free internet unlimited <laughs> access to internet for free that was my you know experience for my first one year i mean first full year from february 2021 to February 2022 I didn't pay any bills at all um, that was actually a very soft landing for me all thanks to University of Sunderland even though I didn't get a lot of value for my program at least I appreciated the university for giving that one year scholarship for accommodation honestly it gave me a lot of soft landing and the pressure wasn't much when it came to balancing up the um, my tuition fee so you need to talk about accommodation now depending on the city um, that also depend on how stressed you would be or the you know the value the the uh, amount of financial commitment you need to put into accommodation for where i live I, I i used to live in sunderland before i moved to newcastle and you know if you just want to live a low-key life you can get a shared apartment you can get it for from the range of 300 to 450 pounds per month and don't forget you're only allowed to work 20 hours per week and if you have to look at let's say you're able to you're lucky to get a very good job that pays well and you earn let's say for instance 15 pounds per hour that means in a week you earn about 300 pounds before tax so you get taxed and i will be deducted from your um you know fee and people say oh your student shouldn't be taxed if you earn more than a certain amount um, per week you will be taxed regardless of the fact that you're a student you will be taxed so you get at the end of the month, probably you're able to make like let's say 900 pounds and you spent about 450 pounds on accommodation. And this particular estimate can be more or less for you depending on the city you're going to. People pay less a month. I know someone that pays 250 pounds per month for a shared apartment. So it depends on the city. So if you talk about accommod accommodation, now depending on the kind of accommodation you get, if it's not bills inclusive, then you start paying for data, you need to pay for electricity, you need to pay for gas. You need to pay for water. So some, some of the bills you're going to incur if you're, uh, you know, you're living in an apartment that is not bills inclusive. So you need to pay for all of those things. Now, um, the, um, the 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 amount I just mentioned here, by the time you estimate them compared to the amount of money you're going to make monthly on a 20 hour per week job, trust me, guys, you're not going to have any savings. I know a lot of people who, you know not even a lot of people if you're coming to the uk to pay up the balance of your tuition fee they trust me for the first one year you're not going to be set to you're probably going to go, not going to have savings i know people that after the end of that program they have to borrow money again to be able to apply for post study work visa that's the reality especially if you don't have enough money or you have like loads of balance to pay up with your tuition fee so studying the uk is quite a lot of money to be honest and this estimate is for someone who is single like me who is unmarried who has no responsibility home and abroad probably abroad <laughs> i probably um oh my boy yeah probably abroad but this is truth is it's quite a lot of money for those coming with families you're probably going to get a flat most of the flats in the uk are unfurnished you need to buy a lot of things to furnish the accommodation you know your kids need to go to school even though most of the schools in the uk most all public or public invest uh, public um, schools in the united kingdom are free for your kids so but obviously you need to pay some things you need to buy some things for your kids and it's quite a lot of pressure financially and if you have toddlers children that you know are of very small age probably between two to three or less than that both 
uh, parents can't leave their house and leave them alone. So one person needs to stay back home while the other person needs to go out there and work. You know, it's quite a lot of pressure. And, you know, just share with us in the comment section how it is studying in the UK, how the financial pressure has been so far for you. You know, you might actually inspire someone or, you know, help someone from making the wrong decision. So, guys, studying in the UK is quite a lot. It's cost me a lot to study in the UK, which I know is the same for many international students. But the sincere truth is, is actually worth it, the value of money spent on those particular courses compared to what you learn from those universities are they actually you know um in correlation is there any you know uh, relationship between those um uh, values but however just as i tell people studying the uk for a master's program is a means to an end you know we are not they are master i know people that have got two masters back in nigeria and a year for a master's program so it's a means to an end however is it worth the investment please share your thoughts in the comment section so this is going to be the end of this video if you have any thoughts please state in the comment section please click on the like button so that this video can get to as many people as possible and if you're coming across my channel for the first time please click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and for my returning subscribers thank you guys a little love thank you for being here i really do appreciate you guys so this will be the end of this video and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you